Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey! guest with me, actress, stand-up comedian, voice actress, Lori Allen. Hello! Thank you! Yeah, thank, thank you for having me. Yeah, she she made it through uh, Los Angeles traffic. I did at 5 o'clock. I had time to do pink nail polish in the car. I was like, what in holy bleep is going on with the traffic? And I was like, you know you have some time on your hands when you get to paint all ten nails. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. You well, need it is, to do them well. It is dangerous to paint nails while you're driving. Well, it was a complete standstill. <laughs> it was a complete standstill, so it wasn't like it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so goes the L.A. traffic. Yeah, that's L.A. traffic. Well, you made it through, and okay, thanks for stopping did. over. Yes, thanks for having me. So you are, um, your current project right now is uh, Inside Out. Inside Out. Yes, and what was it like Pretty being part things. of such a gigantic project? Well, well, you're in a lot of gigantic projects, obviously, Despicable and everything. But. Oh, thank you. The Pixar, pro the Pixar projects, the Pixar movies, are absolutely so wonderful to be a part of. First of all, the movies, I mean, I think a lot of us have grown you up are. with them. Oh, <gasps> <Yay>! <laughs> um, to have to have been a part of them in any way, shape, or form is just fantastic. I mean, the best part for me is really going into the studio, you know, going mm -hmm. to the studio, the sound stage at Disney, and being a part of that with your fellow voice actors and just being on your feet and improvising all day is fantastic. And then to come to see the final you know, project to see the movie at, at its, you know, because we've gone in several times by that point, right. many times on a feature film like that. And then to see it, you're like, oh, you're like a kid at the movies. It's just incredible. It's really, really incredible. How is it working yeah. with um, everyone and reuniting with certain people that you've already worked with before? It's interesting because a lot of the times you're not in the booth, so to speak. You know, you're not doing your lines with, you know, I didn't, I haven't met the main cast. I got to see some folks and chat with them at the premiere. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, just like with any other series that I'm on, you go in one at a time two at a time you're always doing some pickup lines by yourself um, the folks that I was in the booth or in the studio with on the sound stage are like Mona Marshall and I mm -hmm. got to see Carlos Alves Rocky and Lorraine Newman and um, Sherry Lynn and so that's amazing so we're all doing you know you, you tend to hang out with who's on your like we were the mom's voices and the, the yeah. dads or with the dad's voices oh. and so we're like the Pixar policy so we get to be you know with our with our fellow peeps like that so we're on our feet just 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 doing chewing up the scenery all day Danny Mann and Jess Harnell a lot of big voiceover folks like that. So. Do you find it challenging just in general to um, do a voice without really having the real person or like having just the line being thrown at you instead of, you know? I think by this point I'm probably used to it. Honestly, I'm used to it at this point with, because um, it's really voice acting, you know? I think when people are like, I have a really cool voice, I should just get into voiceovers. And sometimes <laughs> that's, that's good, but you have to really be a voice actor. You have to be a good storyteller. You know, you have to really know how to put your, you know, your voice acting, your acting skills to the test, you know, like, where did I just come from, mm -hmm. what, who, you know, um, what do I want in this scene, how do I feel about this character, like, who am I talking to, how do I feel about that person, um, what do I want from this person in the scene, so for me, coming from a theater background, coming from an on-camera background, like, that's, for me, I just have to kind of pretend there's no microphone there, mm -hmm. so, and then especially if you're auditioning, like, from your home studio to, to uh, for, for any voiceover auditions, you know, really filling in the blanks, like, oftentimes I'll be auditioning for stuff from home, like today I was recording a lot today and I literally will kind of mumble the other person's line and then just edit that stuff out Oh, you know because I have to be able to um, have a full dialogue a full experience um, hmm. um, and then sort of edit their stuff out but I have to really be able to paint in all the scenery inside my head you know yeah that makes um, sense yeah and then with stuff like this we're able to see some of it obviously when we're in the studio yeah the inside out stuff we're able to see I keep seeing studio the sound stage because it's so awesome when you're on the Disney lot and seeing all that so uh, we'll tell us a little about your character and this movie? Sure. Um, well, the characters in the mom's head, um, <laughs> they're, they're really like the view. They're sitting at the headquarters in the movie. All of Riley, the main character, the, the girl,
girl who's who's awesome. Caitlin is the actress, and she's got all her voices, you know, voiced by the main actors there. And there are several of us that are in the mom's head, and a lot of the guys that are in the dad's head, because you know, parents have feelings too. Go yeah. figure. Adults have feelings too, yeah. and emotions, right? And so. Um, um, is that we really seem like the, the girls in the view. It's very funny. And I was like, can't tell. So mom's sadness. And I was like, I wonder if it's really a cross between maybe Whoopi Goldberg and uh, Barbara Walters. I think it's really like the bossy, but but it's still sadness. I think she's upset that she can't get through to her husband. Mm-hmm. I love that trailer from the beginning, you know, when it first came out, where she's just trying to like signal the husband, signal the husband. And they're sitting at like a little table like this with their, you know, do, 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 yeah. their, um, their little buttons. So, oh, that's um, cute. Yeah. Once we got to see, once you get to see a picture, you're like, I'm in. You know, you kind of get into your body, see the picture, and then it just informs you and you're good to go. You know, you're good to go. Um, well, are there any reasons that you can give us why our viewers would love Inside Out? I'm sure they would. I'm hearing great things about it. Yeah. Um, I think people will love Inside Out because it takes you on a journey um, that's not just, it's not a, just a kids and parents movie. It's not just take your kids to the to the movie. It's really about, I mean, one of the things that is just for, for that, that, kid, that parents will just, oh my God, mm-hmm. is that it does, you do get to see a child go from like, you know, from a baby, there's some, the animation is just incredible when you see her as a baby, going from a young girl to adolescence and the flashbacks of her as a baby, there's a lot of them that's just beautiful to look at, but um, how to deal with your emotions and how that they're struggle. all, n- not only are they all relevant but necessary to have a full experience as a human being. Now, you can't ignore sadness. You can't. Yeah, sadness and is a it's sad It's a little bit feeling, of a spoiler though. alert. No, because she saves a day. Oh. She saves a day. Okay. You know, it's like sort of like if you were to do, you can't do like a little bypass. Like, you know, having, I just lost my dog on Tuesday. Like, I went through a really bad, sad breakup. Like, you can't just sort of ignore, like, grief sure. or despair or anguish. You can't, you know... We try to sometimes, Right, though. and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you're like, my stomach really hurts. My hair just all fell out. You know what I mean? Like, you, you have to deal with your feelings. And then you have to be able to be like, I'm upset with you. I, we need to talk, or I'm, I'm disappointed, or I'm... You know, all those things you need to be able to kind of process as a full human being. Um, and that, to me, is one of the things. Maybe I've just been in therapy too long. But that's one of the things that, <laughs> that I find really um, kind of really beautiful about the film. I think their sh- therapists should be, like, handing their cards outside the, <laughs> out of, outside of the movie. Be two-for-one <laughs> sessions, family sessions, two-for-one. Two um, so they say it's a big thing in L.A.? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that and colonics. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. This is terrible. <laughs> but I think that... And traffic. Um, and traffic. <laughs> and traffic. Did I mention my nails look really great? Right about the 405 entrance. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I think that uh, that really dealing with your, your emotions, there's no way to kind of get around them. Yeah. Know? So that's to me... And, and the journey that people go through, and you really want to push the bad stuff away. And when you mm-hmm. do that, you just end up like... You end up kind of just at a dead end with yourself and with everybody else that you're trying to be close with. It's the true. The intimacy that we crave so much, you end up pushing people away when you don't really deal with your, quote, stuff. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's so true. I, I That's what I took away from it. And my, my dear friend Danny, who I'm sitting next to, was weeping, and then he he was saying, that's my girl, that's my daughter, yep, that's her, uh, that's her. So I think everybody takes away a little something, but that's what I certainly took away from it. Well, I'm excited yeah. to see it. I yeah. wasn't able to see it. It's coming yeah. out this Friday. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a note to pull my shirt over my bra. So whoever I might have flashed thus far, thank lucky you. them. Lucky and I'm them. I'm single. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for the alert. So you also thank you guys. You also uh, play Pearl and SpongeBob. Yes, yes, I'm Pearl the Whale. Yes, and we just recorded last week. It was so fun. Yeah, yes, well, I was going to ask you how fun is it, but clearly it's a lot of fun. It's so fun because every time we record, Cute. hi. <laughs> look at her, I look really bad. I'm pulling her. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. Yeah, I love her so much because we're always in the booth together. Okay. That's why it's so much fun. We are always in the booth together recording as an entire cast. That's Every cute. once in a blue moon, you'll go do a pickup line, an ADR line. But yeah. for the most <laughs> That's rare, right, for everyone to be in this booth together? Yeah. I, I, I think maybe when I first started off in the business, when I my very first series was SWAT Cats and then like the Fantastic Four, like the Marvel remake yeah. of Fantastic Four, we were always in the booth t- <laughs> together. Ah! So what's this like, character like? She's a big, huge teenager, and she's larger than every other like character in the she show. She's angry. a big, huge. In that scene, she's probably just trying. I can't remember what episode this is. From. I feel like <laughs> a, maybe somebody could write in or, or tell us, yeah. call us, tell us, tell us what episode this is. Um, 
she looks like she's upset that that's SpongeBob. What am I saying? That's him. Um, is he's trying to impersonate? Well, he's her. always you know I can't, crazy I feel with his terrible. boobs. That might have been the birthday episode, or whatever <laughs> birthday. But um, she's usually annoyed at him for something. But she's just like the world's biggest like teenager who just really wants to be liked, and her daddy's very cheap. Because he won't ever give her enough money to go to the mall. Yeah. It's very, very cheap. <laughs> but I remember seeing that drawing and thinking, she is larger than any other person in Bikini Bottom, um, or creature, mm -hmm. rather, right? So I knew that she had to have, like, the biggest dress. But, like, she still had to sound somewhat like a... Um, like a child, but that she just had to have an abnormally large, large, large voice, but still had to be like a child somewhat. So yeah. somehow that voice ended up coming out. So you do a lot of, you know, children's cartoons, children's. Mm -hmm. SpongeBob is actually great for adults, too. I know. There's it's a lot of good adult stuff in there. <laughs> yeah, do you? Yeah. Yes. It's great because it goes through the children's head, so it just yeah. works out perfectly. Um, uh, how do you feel about all the children, your chil children fans? Like, I, I think I'm, I, I don't know, there's several. Uh, Tom Kinney is probably one of my, he's such a dear friend of mine, and um, he is so wonderful. He's directing this season, which, which oh, is incredible. Okay. Which is so great. Mm -hmm. um, I love the kids' fans. Like, when I went to New York to do the premiere, and it was so cool seeing so many kids mm -hmm. um, just dressed up in all their various, like, character and SpongeBob, you know, paraphernalia and whatnot. And it's so exciting to me because it's, they're just so happy. I made the, I made a long distance call to Australia um, for my, um, a friend of a friend, her boy, my friend Fia's boyfriend, and, uh, and they were just so excited. They were at a birthday party. We got we got everybody really quiet. And I can, sorry, I can't remember the birthday boy's name. And he was turning eight. Uh -huh. And I was like, happy, it was Jonathan, I think. I hope I remember this correctly. Happy birthday, Jonathan! And just to hear like 20 kids, they were like crying and screaming. Aww. And it was just, he was so happy. That's so and sweet. And even my own nephew, who's like turning 17, he's like, yeah, you know, my auntie's, uh, he's got this, I can't even imitate how low his voice is. But he's so excited that, you know, his, his auntie is, is oh, yeah. so, you know. Of course, I mean, you yeah. keep giving him things to be excited about yeah. inside out and also how, yeah. how old your nephew Isaac is 17 and my niece is Nina is 14 okay yeah so are they of age to have watched you as Diane and Family Guy yes they, uh, they are they are definitely of age to have watched Family Guy and how, how was that experience being Diane and the Family Guy incredible oh look there I am there you are sort again sort of like this table right here hi <laughs> Diane now I can I can hear the voice it's that's trip. right that's right back to you in the studio <laughs> here we are in the studio um, this studio is awesome by the way that's I love this character so much. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite episode. Thank you. By the way, um, yeah, this just looks incredible. Anyway. <laughs> I want to just live great. in the studio lighting. <laughs> Make sure I live there and keep my boots again. Covered. You're more than welcome to live here. Really? <laughs> great. Yes, of course. Um, working on this show for as long as I did was probably one of the one of the best jobs I've ever had Aww. ever 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 and the best fans I get the craziest. I'm fan sure. From this oh, show. I'm sure. Well, she is super crass and just. Well, that's nasty. Seth MacFarlane. And hats love. off, hats off to <laughs> Seth. There's no, there's no doubt about it. He's probably, I think he's probably the most talented person I've ever met, and Very one of the loveliest people yeah. I've ever met. I met him originally um, doing Larry and Steve, which is a project that he did coming out of Rhode Island School of Design. And um, uh, Chris Zimmerman, who's like one of my favorite directors and human beings, um, when she was working at Hanna Barbera mm -hmm. at the time, and he won like I think it was like a scholarship or a, to do a short um, that they did uh, that he did from Larry and Steve, and it was about a guy in a talk. Mm -hmm dog and uh, so Hannah <laughs> Barbera produced it coming out of school for him and it was a short and it was it was wonderful and I did all these voices and I did like um, this character we sold him a mattress for his doggy and it was so cute and precious <laughs> and we did all the voices and it was great and then I just stayed in touch with him and I remember thinking this guy is like incredible like yeah. there's something freakishly like as nice as he is talented as he is kind and I was like this he's in this is just incredible I've never met anyone like him and I met his parents and then and then we stayed in touch. I think that was before the interweb, or, mm -hmm. you know, it had just started anyway. And then several years later, we, we sort of lost touch. I remember going to test for Lois at Fox, and I walked in, and I was like, oh! <gasps> Hi. Hi, Seth. Yeah. And I just completely, we hadn't talked for a little bit, and I just was like, oh, my gosh. So Phil Lamar and myself had been on from the very beginning as, you know, doing other voice. He was obviously a weatherman, mm -hmm. and we've been doing um, other um, utility voices from the very beginning. So it's 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 still just, you know, it's it, that and Pearl. I think they're just a tie for my favorite things ever. The, the episode, somebody asked me what my favorite Family Guy episodes are. I think maybe the one... Um, 
where Tom and Diana Stone doing the news. Oh yeah, is probably my my <laughs> might be the favorite. And then we're of course because I'm a musical <laughs> theater geek and a theater geek in general. Yes. So where she's off doing the King and I. Uh -huh. Oh, I remember but that Diana's one. off doing you know community she theater. She was being a witch. Well, she's that's that was her. So when you um, you know read lines to uh, for her character. Yeah. When you first read them, were you how far of, out of your element did you have to go? Not very, because my mom's an announcer. I have two voiceover parents. Okay. So I heard my mom growing up like Channel Nine News. That's right. You know, coming up next is the weather or whatever. So for me to have an, I have you know two parents that do voiceovers and have very lovely announcer voices. My sister's a DJ. Uh huh. So to have a sort of news anchor, you know, in my head, my mom would announce the news. So. Um, it just so worked it wasn't, out. It wasn't, it wasn't a real stretch to do that. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah really um, cool. So you obviously um, you lent your voice to cartoons, animation, and also there's a video game that you lent your voice to, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, yeah, baby. I'm boss. sure that opened a whole slew of... Other... Woo, talk about that fan. Fans, now. yes. Ooh, and a couple of stalking experiences. That's really? interesting. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, cool. Because you're you're badass at Metal Gear. I'm badass. Yeah. She shows her boobs more than I do in real <laughs> life. That's what happens. Yeah. So how did you get uh, called for this role, or how did you get this one? Uh, I think it might be good old Chris Zimmerman again. I'm not sure. Hmm. It's been so long. I don't remember what the audition process was for that. But Chris Zimmerman is the voice director on that as well, and um, she is she's a talk about a badass. She is a badass director. She's incredible. She can get any emotion out of anyone for anything. Yeah. And she's this character is amazing. I wish I had the balls that she has just in, in terms of we courage all do. and strength. We all do. In terms of games, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just look at her. I get I get so many cool, like my fans will send me like the most amazing drawings of what she looks, you know, what they think she looks That's like. awesome. What they think she should be, what kind of, you know, prequel that there should be mm -hmm. for her, you know, an entire game oh, dedicated yeah. to her. It's where it all started. And their love affair. She's just a complex woman. The love affair mm -hmm. um, with Snake. I mean, it's just incredible. Would you be down for a prequel? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's kind of important. It's like when Star Wars goes back and explains like where it all comes from. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's kind of amazing when certain when certain characters either then go on. It's a weird kind of analogy, right? But I love to like you know um, who loves Saul or what's right when Breaking Bad. What's the uh, Better Call Saul? Better Call Saul. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. So. Um, like, I love when I see where characters go or where they came from, if they're really that good. I'm like, yeah, I want to see where they went or where they came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She will. She, she is wanna that good. I want to know where she started, you know I mean? Because I get, I mean, I just get these crazy long things sent to me and of like, I think, and I'm like, well, yeah. write it, you know? And so I get so, a lot of cool tweets about where she, where they think she came from and what should have, what they, you know, what they'd like to see. So you're definitely enjoying the new slew of fans ba um, from this uh, experience. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very cool. And uh, so obviously, Obviously, video game voiceover is a little different, or a lot different, yeah. than you know, animation voiceover. What's uh, the big challenge that you probably had leaping into that? Um, That's a great question because video games, you are in the studio, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time by yourself. Oh wow! And you are acting f by yourself, you know, vocally, emotionally by yourself. I mean, obviously, with the director on the other side, like where these guys are. Yeah. But it's um. It's it's some serious acting and it's really intense. It's really intense. Um, by the end of the day, you save all the screams till the end because mm -hmm. vocally you've already been talking for four or five hours and you're. It's oh, the stakes are very high in video games, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The stakes, the acting is really high. It's always like life and death, and you know, obviously, and anything in between. Mm -hmm. But they're all, the stakes are very, very high. So you're in there by yourself for four to five hours, usually on any given session, unless they're small. Does it get lonely? Does <laughs> it get lonely? <laughs> like, oh, I'm sad. Does it get lonely? I need my baby dogs, my puppy, my new doggy, Bumble. Um, but yeah, you, it's, it's intense, and the acting, the, the concentration and just the, the focus that it requires, especially because Chris, it's funny you should say that, actually, because Chris is, Chris is so with you. She just will read you in, and any great director, and all the great directors that I'm so fortunate enough to work with, will just read you in and you are there with them. But it's intense, especially that that particular character is not vulnerable at all. She's in charge. Well, she is vulnerable, oh, no, actually. So the moments where she is vulnerable and she's got a lot of expository stuff about what's gone on in the history of the world and the history of that game and their relationship. And so it's intense. Yeah. And you have to be present, like really present, present. It's not like where you can just check out and kind of improvise a laugh and a line or two. It's just, it's all of you, baby. And you're in there a lot longer. And there's a lot of, you know, vocal stuff that goes on at the end with a lot of grunts and the, ah, 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 
uh, all the you know that's true stuff that happens <laughs> on the field. It's a lot. Yeah. So then at, at, at the end of four hours, let's say of talking, then you've got all the fight scenes, all the the vocalizations that's, of the, uh, 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 and the all that stuff. For like a common folk like myself, I would imagine all the screams you try to get rid of early, so your voice would still. You do it at the end, so you don't uh, blow your voice out. Interesting. You're like, Can I save the scream? Can I do the blood curdling thing just once? And they're like, because I can't pop a cord for tomorrow morning <laughs> session, you know. So yeah. Oh. You save all that till the end. Learn something new. Yeah, because your voice isn't really warmed up, especially mm -hmm. on a lot of animation stuff. Your session is at 9 a.m., and I'm not one of those voice actors that has vocal cords of steel. I so wish I was, um, and I wish like I love Cree Summer. She the first thing in the morning or Gray Delisle and Tara Strong. I love those three women so much because they can get up and be like. Bleh! And I just can't. Like, I'm like, me, 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 me. Like, I'm singing on the way to a session because I don't have the just ability to get up and scream my brains out. I just don't. So I get up and I have to, like, vocalize. And Are there some practices little... you do to keep your voice? Mm -hmm. um... Yeah, I have voice lesson on Friday. Like, I go and okay. do my little warm-ups for speaking and singing. Oh, but you're also yeah. a coach. Yeah. Interesting. But I coach more from the acting side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and we coach just strictly like about the acting side of it. It's not mic technique. Um, I've taught, you know, with other people that teach on a larger scale, but for one-on-one, -on -one, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, yeah. which I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, aside from voice acting, you're also just an actress as well. Yeah. So what other things have people probably seen you in? Um, I'm trying to think lately if somebody might have seen me on Ray Donovan or I do a lot of commercials to Ray Donovan or Castle or... Is Mon this true? Valley. You were on Sha in the Shakey's Pizza commercial. Oh my God, my day, yes. <laughs> my da and that's so funny because I'm totally gluten free and I can't do dairy. But my dad, um, what, my parents were actors and my dad went off for a while and did a lot of uh, advertising. He wrote great jingles and commercials and he would stick me and my sister in his commercials. Oh, that's so and cute. And this one particular one for Shakey's. Um, it was very cool. It was like before the whole handheld thing was in fashion, and it was in the early seventies. <laughs> so he stuck me and my sister and my cousins uh -huh. um, in the Shakey's Pizza commercial, and the jingle was like, "Come on down, come on down, come on down to Shakey's for a change, a little change. Come on down." And it was all of us like, <laughs> being kids, obnoxious, crazy kids eating pizza. So it was like it was this. I'm sure he won a, a bajillion awards for it. It was a really funny commercial, and there were no spit bucks back then and I literally had like a gluten intolerance like I was, oh so my sick gosh. I was just back sick then? all the time and I was like dad I don't feel so bleh. oh you know? yeah. but the commercial stuff was really fun to film <laughs> is that where you caught your acting bug or was that before it was before okay it was before I mean I knew I'm trying to think when I knew knew I don't think I ever didn't know. I know mm -hmm. that sounds weird, but I did not know. You got lucky. You knew what yeah. you wanted at an early age. Yeah, because my parents did it. And uh, I think if I'd ever come home and said, you know, Mom, Dad, um, I want to I wanna be a doctor or a lawyer, they would have been like, what about a day job? <laughs> what about something more substantial? Do you know how to type? You know, I mean, I mean, you know, don't you know how to tap dance? I mean, I think that they really would have thought I was crazy had I said <laughs> I wanted to do something else. But I was never told no, and I always got great role models, um, and I just saw them do it. I saw mm. them do it, really do it, and go from acting to singing to directing to jingle writing to my mom. Still, my mom's always in like thirteen different plays at once and directing and multi. -threat. My dad writes musicals, and I mean, I just I get. And my sister's a DJ, like I, all of us are, are in the biz. That's and I awesome. I just knew it, yeah. That's cool. You're in the family. You guys all support yeah. each other, understand the struggles yeah. and, and everything. And I was a dancer. For the longest time, I wanted to be a ballerina until my, my uh, ballet instructor, Mrs. Mrs. Blake, took my mother's side and she was like, um, <laughs> Uh, she's she's fabulous. We like to put her in the front in recitals. Yeah. She's got a lot of pizzazz, um, but she's basically, I was like, my mom was like, just spit it out. She's got boobs, <laughs> boobs and thighs. <laughs> She's built like a brick shit house. Okay, so she can't do ballet. She's not gonna. She's not gonna be a ballerina. She's got boobs and legs. You, okay, fine. Would you do so dancing? Musical theater. So we'll do that instead. Would you do dancing with the stars if they called you? Oh my gosh! In a heartbeat. Oh, I would love it. So cute. I would love it. So cute. Yes. That's yes. awesome. I think that's your. You're on it. Is there? You got to start it. You got to start it. Yes. Yes. Oh my god, I would love it. Is there? Is there a pro partner you would want to dance with? 
Um, what's that? Oh my God, he's so hot. I well, there's a lot I of hot concentrate. Um, Max, he's just uh. so hot. He's delicious. <laughs> he's so... Yeah, I mean, I don't think I you don't could think lose could with any of them, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think I could concentrate. Um, and uh, I, I'm trying to think who's the last season who um, danced with the rumor. He's Val, wonderful too. Val, his yes. his brother. Yeah, yeah. 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 I guess they're, they're both. Just yeah. so he's so nice, Val too. He's lovely. They all seem really nice. Yeah, yeah tough. Yeah. I'll let you pick that out since you're in charge of that oh, now. I'll, I'll, do just, my, I'll do my best. And yes. if it happens, remember me. Just yes. remember me. <laughs> yes, please. Um, so, Shakey's Pizza, Ray Donovan. What else have people probably seen you in? Well, if they were living in Los Angeles in 2009, if anybody came down to uh, Club Nokia, um, they would have seen the live Pee Wee Herman show. You were in the live Pee Wee Herman yeah. show? That must have been so that fun. That was incredible. Yeah. That was incredible. I totally know which, what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was probably one of the the coolest things I've ever done in my life. Um, what was so great about this experience? Well, working with Paul, just meeting Paul Rubens, mm -hmm. that in and of itself. Well, he's a character. Right, so I could have just <laughs> walked in and auditioned for him and left and been like, I could just have died at that moment and been like, okay, I'm good. I'm, just, I'm done, I'm good. I, you know, because in my household growing up, I watched like Soul Train and Pee Wee Herman. Everyone else was watching like, you know, kids' cartoons. And I did watch a lot of cartoons. But that's what I watched. That's what I thought. My parents were like, go right on. So I was in the other room, like, get down on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, Soul Train and, and uh, Pee Wee Herman. So auditioning for that, they wanted people to that could do a lot of voices and mm -hmm. that could also be like live action and to understudy another huge I bow down to you know Lynn Marie Stewart who's you know uh -huh. Miss Yvonne yeah yeah so I remember just getting all dolled up and having just crazy hair and makeup and a crimson oh, that went fun. like out to here and fun, fun. high like like five inch platform pink jelly shoes and I walked in and I said hi Pew I think I came like flittering into the room because I a I tripped and I remember that very well and he said, hello. I said, hi, hi, Pee-wee. And he said, hello, Miss Yvonne. And I knew right then that we were going to be like fast friends. And he was like, you just did like every voice, mm -hmm. you know, from the flowers to like <laughs> ginger the hose. Because my dear friend Phil Amar played yeah. um, Cowboy Curtis. And so. Cowboy the, Curtis. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So he had a horse in this version. All it's these memories. Like Delta Burr back. kind of horse. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh -huh. And um, so that was just a great production. We went like, I think there was like, it was right around Thanksgiving. And we started like right after Thanksgiving. And to be thrust into working with, you know, John Moody and John Paragon, and all the, the guys from the original thing that I had watched growing mm -hmm. up. And then to be in the room with them and like mounting this production quickly was just unbelievably cool and and it was fast and it was furious and to help sort of be able to just like get those characters down that were you know that we had, that I had grown up with all my life and to be able right. to have the privilege of voicing them again that's and pretty awesome a new twist that's on them really and, awesome. and watching him you know the the crowd was so flippin' excited yeah that Paul did something really cool he would go out and do the pledge of allegiance randomly in the very beginning because we knew that if we brought the lights up to just the Pee Wee's Playhouse like good morning Pee Wee yeah that people would just be like ah! it was like seeing the Beatles uh -huh, uh -huh. it was like seeing the Beatles uh -huh. that's the reaction that it that happened oh well, yeah so that if he didn't go out and do something first to let people like ah! like just freak out <laughs> You know what I mean? So he would go out and say the Pledge of Allegiance and then come back and he would race, race back to the top of the steps where he'd be like, la, 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 and come down and then do his entrance. So much energy. It's a, it's, I'm sure. It makes me look kind of sleepy and have, you know, I cry and demure. So that was incredible. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, now I, I've lost my train of thought because I'm completely. Uh, you do stand up as well. Yeah. Um, where where can people find you doing your stand-up recently, currently? Uh, I haven't done a lot of stand-up recently because I've been so busy with this. Yeah. Um, uh, probably you'll find me back um, at Flappers and things like that. And, and oh, okay, in cool. the improv and things like that. And I love the M-Bar. That's where I did my solo show. So I have to get that back up on its feet because it was so funny. And I was like, my dear friend Suzanne helped me <laughs> give me the title years ago. This was, gosh maybe 2003 or four, and um, I was like, what am I going to call my show? And she was like, how about L'Oreal the Musical, Larger Than Life, huh. that's you. And so I think it'll be like L'Oreal the Musical, The Perimenopausal Adventures of, I don't know, it's just <laughs> going to be something funny about like doing it, you know, maybe 10 years later. So that's um, in the work, so we'll have that going on. I <laughs> took a class at Flappers to do stand-up, so I had my first showcase yes. a couple weeks ago. How did it go? It was amazing and scary at the same time. Don't you feel a good sense of accomplishment? Yes, and I actually have my second show this coming Friday, but I'm shitting bricks. Okay. Because I'm just scared. Right. Um, do you have any recommendations for me to like ease that anxiety? Yes, you have to breathe and you have to acknowledge that you're nervous. And you have to... Um, 
think what you have to do also do is, you know, everyone thinks that stand up is really like everyone's just being off the cuff. And as you know, it's the exact opposite. It's you have to so know your scary. jokes inside out mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. that's the way you're going to feel comfortable within that, um, within the structure of like set up punchline, set up punchline, yeah. and then then you throw it away, so that you're so comfortable within your set of jokes, right? And within your set, yeah. Whether it's five minutes, you have five or seven minutes, or about ten minutes. five six minutes, right? Yeah. So that then if it's so that your brain goes, okay, that one, that one, that one, that one, and it automatically your brain will be like, no, nah, but and so if you're getting this great response, then just be willing to, to if you're if you're the audience is with you on this like third joke and you know that you've got two more and then that one really great last one, yeah, be willing to stay with this one, then go right to the end or whatever. Just try, uh, like, it's a great practice, it's so scary, it's a great opportunity rather to practice trusting your instincts on stage, yeah. Have you ever been heckled? Um, I got heckled. It's always about the boobs. I got heckled about my boobs. And oh, I boo. got heckled. Um, How do you handle the heckle, getting heckled? Cause I usually turn it on them, and I say I just ask them something, you know? Aww. I just would be like, oh, so um, um, so do, do you, so, oh, does that mean you want to, should we, should we do it right now then? Mm-hmm. Did you, you want to touch them now? Should, does that mean I should stop? Because I can take my bra off, but that would be kind of uncomfortable. I usually just stop dead set in the middle of what I'm saying. And that sort of just shuts them up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or make it a part of it and just keep going. Because if it's really inappropriate, or someone's just drunk and like, ah, 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 you know, then it just kind of let it go. And be like, okay, well, you've clearly are not going to be taking, you're going to be taking an Uber home anyway, you know, and then just kind of keep going. Just, just don't let it throw you. you I just know find I mean? stand-up a lot of fun, but it's also just... I just get so much anxiety, even right now, thinking about my Friday show. I'm like, oh my god! You just have to remember to also have fun. And if yeah. you, you, you know, I think we get, I, because I, the older I get, sometimes I'll be like, oh my god, I forgot what I was going to say, or this or that. Do you still get the, the anxiety? Yeah, you, you should. That means you're present. Oh, yeah. Well, that's when true. you try, if you try to put those nerves somewhere else or put them aside, then you're not in your body. Mm-hmm. So I, I always get excited and nervous, always. Like, I remember before, as the, the curtain would roll up, and I'm backstage doing the Pee Herman show, I was like, oh. you should be nervous, right? Because yeah. that means you're alive. I remember hearing, like, Lawrence Olivia used to throw up, Barbara Streisand gets nervous, Liza Minnelli, I mean, Richard Burton, so you're in good company. I get nervous. I mean, <laughs> I get nervous all the time. So, But I think with stand-up in particular, any kind of live thing like that, um, you have to know your structure, and then you have to be really willing to throw it away. Um, hmm. So that you can just be really free to be in your body. Like for me, I have to like plant both feet on the ground, uh-huh. and I, I'm really envious of stand-ups who can take the mic out and wander. Yeah, I can't. I do can't that. do that. <laughs> Obviously, it's like my. I'm like round, in but... front of the mic, probably because of what I do for mm-hmm. my voice career. Mm-hmm. I have to stand in front of it so that I can just stand there because I'm a big like talking with my hands kind of person. <laughs> so I feel much more free when I'm in standing behind it and I can just talk. Like I'm so I'm like oh my god, she took the mic out of the stand and now he or she is walking. Like that just freaks me out. So if you're more comfortable standing, then stand. Yeah. Absolutely just stand in place. I'm also very gesture, I don't know the word, but yeah. I, I do a lot of gestures. Yeah. And so then just stand still. I, well, yeah. and I'm happy like, oh my gosh. But yeah. it's, it's, it was a great experience, and I, I obviously want to continue. I think every person should have to do that. I mean, they say that the number one mm-hmm. fear of everyone is public speaking. I, I believe it. I, I know. It, if you just being this, there. Yeah. It, I mean, it, and I, I, for me, it didn't get, it's actually more scary this time around. Right, because you did it once before. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a diet where the first time round you do well, and the second time you're not so good at doing that. And I that. think having a point of view about how, what you're thinking, what you're saying, right? So I remember this great class I took with Judy Carter. It had to run like 15 years ago, and she was like, you know, you could be like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, but she used to talk about how she could teach, you know, a plumber a joke, how to tell a joke. You know, uh-huh. that there could be a, a the the setup, and then the the um the, the sort of act out, if you will. So if you can do voices, that's always a plus. If you can't, it doesn't matter. But she would say, just have an, a strong opinion about yeah. what you're saying, so you don't have to try to be so clever about the actual joke. I mean, that's always great if you're. I'm not that. Cl- I'm not incredibly smart comedian. Okay. I, I'm not. <laughs> I used to be so envious of my ex-boyfriend, Jamie, who was, like, such a great comedian. I'm like, God, you know, it, his improv actually was, um, he's more of an improviser than a yeah. stand-up. But I was like, God, he's so super smart. I could no more on stage under that kind of adrenaline remember anything about geography, history, you know, presidential, but, you know, I, no way. My characters, yes. So if it's character-driven, if you have a good, strong point of view, like, that's great. You know, you yeah. could be like, you know what about cleaning toilets? Oh my God! It, just, it doesn't matter. Just have a strong opinion about what you're saying. Just believe That's that a what good you tip. wrote, uh-huh. and whatever it is, like if you're the, you know, neur- you know, neurotic girl in her early 30s, whether yeah. you're like I'm aging, you know, wh- whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, like you know what, 
being, you know, just having gone through a recent breakup, I'm a crazy dog lady. Yeah. That just means- commit to whatever it is, like a thousand percent, and you don't need to do anything else. That- I promise you. That's the thing about stand up is you're. I feel like I'm throwing my real life story, and then I'm like, wow, I'm a nut job. I'm a nut job. That's Great. What- <laughs> so there you go. Well, but guess what? So does everybody else. Yeah. So does everybody else. Yeah. So that's why you, the more that you're authentically, you were like, oh God, thank God, I can relate to you. That's why like the really good stand ups, like I, I love Louis C.K. Yeah, we all because do. he's so mm-hmm. relatable. He is. He's great. You know, and there's certain comedians that you know maybe your cup of tea may not be your cup of tea. Um, like Chelsea Handler, I. I've just grown to adore her so much because she's so relatable. Her self-deprecation thing has totally become my <laughs> insane cup of tea. Um, like, I've always loved Julie Louis-Dreyfus because she's so authentically goofy and like, you have to love me with what you don't, you know? And so there's that sort of, she has that <laughs> afterthought about her all the time. Uh-huh. So the more just authentically you, like, just do you a thousand percent. So do you, like, times a thousand on Friday and see what that feels like. Oh, thank you for the tip. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's a really good one. And don't back away from, like, what makes you you because that helps us to relate to you and that makes yeah. us feel okay to be us too and that sounds like free to be you and me like Sesame Street but it's true yeah I'm just afraid of the whole you know quiet house like Fuck one that, pardon my French. <laughs> no, because that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, you can't worry about them. There mm-hmm. is no them. I mean, I tell my coaching clients this all the time. There is no them. There is no you know, there is no them. There is no them because if you're doing it to please the them and whoever's out there, mm-hmm. First of all, there is, I mean, to, what is that, that, does, that doesn't serve you in any way. And that's a good model for just life in general, I, I'm I think. I'm 49 years old next month, and I'm still working on that. So yeah, you and me are in the same boat. Yeah, I think everybody working is, on everything. You just can't worry about what other people are going to think of you, because what people think of you is none of your business. And it's true, and it's none of their business what you do as right. well. Right. Working on it myself, girl. So, uh, work in progress all the time. All the time. So you said you were a vegan. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're trying to segue into how did you become a vegan? Does it have to do with your love for pets? That's exactly what happens. So okay. I've always been a, I have a lot of weird, crazy food allergies, which are not necessary to get into TMI. So I've <laughs> to, I was always cutting things out of my diet. Like I'll go to a party and be like, oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. And everyone's like, no, oh, are you, is that just an LA thing? You can't have wheat and dairy. I'm like, no, it's my stomach thing. I'll actually get sick and mm. throw up on you. Um, we don't want that. We don't want that. No, we don't want that at all. And then, um. And so then I was like, oh, actually, but let me see if I can take out refined sugar. Okay, I just feel better because I'm so hyper that God knows anybody watching this or listening. Like, I do not need to have any more sugar. <laughs> so I have one cup of coffee in the morning, and that's it. And then um, I became a migraine sufferer, and uh-huh. so, I, oh. like, alcohol is a trigger. And I was like, well, what happens if I just don't really drink much at all? So maybe I'll have a cocktail occasionally. Mm-hmm. And then any of the food allergies that I was having allergies to, like, then that became most triggers were, would also trigger migraine. And I was like... Then I became very involved with my animal charity, which I'll tell you about. And once I realized um, about how we treat our animals, I just I just couldn't do it. And so I'm really grateful to a lot of the women on my um, uh, campaign, the charity that I work with, because at first I was like, oh, gosh, you know, isn't it okay to just be a vegetarian? And, you know, uh-huh. I, I, every once in a while I, I maybe we'll have, maybe we'll have, uh, some eggs now every, if I'm really really starving so I'm not the best vegan that just as of yet and that that's it's been many many it's been many 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 months now so I was a pescatarian for a while then I was a vegetarian because mm-hmm. I was so, so I have to say like maybe in the I don't know six months I've had eggs like three times or something like that okay that's well it. so I guess yourself I can't really say I'm a full-fledged vegan because uh-huh. I've had some eggs and now that I know what they do with the chicks and everything like that so uh. I'm doing my best to not do that but um, yeah, tell yeah, us about just your. Make, it means a lot to me to 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 just to not eat animals because we share the same planet. So we do. And I just I can't I, I just can't do it anymore. Yeah. It just doesn't make me feel good. It just, physically doesn't make me feel good. I can't digest the food the same way. You know, it so just it we share the same planet. So it's just really as simple as that. Um, it doesn't make me feel good physically, or and more importantly, it doesn't make me feel good to to eat our our the. The, the creatures that we share the same mm-hmm. planet with—they're here, we're here. It's just that simple to me. Um, and then the health, the health yeah. risks of what we're eating when I know what's in them mm-hmm. is so disturbing to me. And how we treat them when we say that we're really treating them humanely—that they're grass-fed—is really just 
it's it's not. But that's for a whole other show. <laughs> it's, um, a ho- it's hogwash. It's hogwash. Hogwash. Pun intended, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> I did well there. You did good. <laughs> so it's you're part of an girl. organization. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about that? I would love to. I really thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, my dear friend, uh, who's the most one of the funniest people I know, my one of my best friends from college, her name is Fia Pereira. You should go watch her do stand up because she's amazing. Okay. Um, she is the founder. I'm the co-founder of the U.S. chapter of No to Dog Meat. No to Dog Meat? No to Dog Meat. You can go check it out, uh, www.notodogmeat.com. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, her day job had been working for the Humane Society at that point when she asked me if I wanted to come help her organize a rally um, because in a lot of Asian countries, they eat dog. Mm-hmm. But what I did not know was that they torture them beforehand because they believe that the meat is sweeter. Yeah, I heard about that. And they do it with cats as well. Aww. And so that's really where all this stuff got in once I saw the torture aspect, uh, which is so disturbing. Um, and doesn't belong any place, anywhere in this modern society mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's not. Uh, it's it's not a you know, of uh, anything that we can tolerate more. Is it? Oh, this is a cultural thing. It's very barbaric. Yeah, it's barbaric. It's mm-hmm. cruel. It's you know. I mean, to get graphic for one second, just because it's important to know what's actually happening, the skinning alive, the boiling alive, mm. electrocuting, blow torching right there, butchering. Oh, these it's poor just, dogs. And they, they're often, well, almost and cats. 99. They're, they're, they're bred, actually, for this, which is even sadder. Uh. Um, but they're also, most often, they're just snatched from people's yards. They have collars on there. Everyone's oh, pets. Oh, my gosh. And they're service animals. So let's <gasps> say that they would help find your brother, sister, loved one out of a tsunami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. be someone's, you know, seeing eye dog or whatever. But then the they all get taken into these um, metal crates, um, these these boxes, these horrifying boxes, and they're not fed any food, not given any water, and they're traveled with this. It makes me want to cry. And these, oh, this, so sad. They have the hottest of hot and cold, cold weather, and they're transported in the middle of the night, dog snatchers. And then we support what our organization does is support all the activists in all these different countries, and we support all the activists over there that are doing amazing work at getting. Mm. Um, the animals off the trucks, the ones that do make it off. I'm glad they're doing that. You know? Yeah, and so our organization, our, our my CEO is Julia DeCadnet, and she's an amazing, amazing woman, a lawyer who happened to be working um, and saw the animals getting tortured and just said, I, I can't see this. I can't unsee this. Really. Right. I can't unsee what I just saw. And so we support some sanctuaries. We're trying to help pass legislation. And P.S., it happens in the United States. Yeah. It happens very much here in California because we're such a big melting pot, like other big cities like mm-hmm. New York and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, so we're trying to close up loopholes here in the U.S. and um, well, how can we do? What can we do to help? You can go to our site and donate because, okay. uh, for example, we just did a big, huge cat rescue of 800 cats, Aww. and uh, we were able to to be able to support them and their their health once they were able to get off the trucks and things like that. And you can we support this wonderful Dogs Mountain, um, which is um, the man that runs that, and his he just um, passed away of a brain tumor, and his amazing family mm-hmm. is now taking over. Um, one of the things we're doing now, uh, because the Yulin Dog Festival is coming up, which is so upsetting, it happens every June, we thought for sure we might be able to, as a global consciousness, as global human beings, be able to stop it this year. Unfortunately, it's continuing. It's a province in China where it's the worst offender, the worst time of year. It's ten to 40,000 dogs are okay. killed for this this time of year. Wait, um, I, I don't even know what the, the Yulin Festival is, so can you describe yeah, it? it's where ten to 40,000 dogs are killed for this purpose. It's sort of like the highest season for this sort of they're atrocity. Just to happen. Yeah, they're killed and eaten, and it's sort of like... That's terrible. Yeah, it's a Yule and Dog Festival. It's sort of like ew. a solstice of... A, Not of, to say ew, but yeah. ew. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very ew. It should it should disgust you. It should, it should make people upset so that they become aware and can do something. And um, there's this beautiful woman named Mrs. Yang, and she's an older lady, and she has saved thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dogs and so on my fan page on Facebook and I've tweeted it out several times I'll try to tweet it as I leave here yes um, and um, and on noted dog meets Twitter um, and on noted dog meets Facebook page all the social media um, you can donate to Mrs. Yang because what she does is all the um, she's getting elderly she needs health care but uh-huh. she has rescued I think on, on the sanctuary that we help support her there are thousands of dogs that she has has rescued uh-huh. from from the dog meat trade and so they need veterinary care so the money that we are actually raising helps her and on that note something that's super positive is we are doing a putting for pups uh, event um, so you can go to putting for pups.com putting for pups putting for pups okay. it's going to be a golf extravaganza 
I did be able to golf with some fabulous celebrities. Really? And then a, um, a beautiful event, a, a comedy, you know, disco, awesome, funky night Can we night golf with night. pups, too? There's going to be a lot of puppies, okay. a lot of hot models. No, there you guys go. will be like, whoo, distracted, <laughs> to be able to, to golf with some hot gals and some, some celebrity guys and gals. Um, maybe some Chelsea Handler and Jane Lynch and some fabulous Jeff Garland, some great comedy by day. And, I just want I mean, to see by day and comedy the variety of dogs that there and yes, are. Yes, <laughs> and everybody will bring their doggies. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we'll have some dancing by night, and it's at the beautiful Pasadena Rose Bowl. And everyone's welcome? Everyone's welcome. Oh, that's kids, good It's going to be kids, dogs, incredible vendors so you can shop, and there's going to be vegan fare, so the food is going to be delicious. Uh, food is going to be absolutely delicious. You know, great food and booze, and um, you guys are so super dog-friendly here. I just oh, saw yeah. beautiful doggies yeah, here. Chloe and um, Sparky. So you can bring Adopted. Chloe and Sparky. Yeah. Who are, are they, your dogs? Um, they're the After Buzz dogs. They're the After Buzz dogs. That's okay, right. So you guys better, would you guys like to come? Um, I, I, I'm sure some people will like to come. You can send me an email and then okay. I'll forward it to everyone. Good, because I was going to say you could sponsor them. If you want to, you can be a sponsor. We'd love to have you as a sponsor. Oh, really? Yeah, you can be You can be there. You can interview anybody there. You can have a thing on the red carpet. I you would can, love it. Yeah. Well, we'll talk after this. Absolutely. Yeah, right. well, that actually wraps up our show Yay. just in time. So we can Perfect. talk after. Exactly. I, yeah. can see, I can see the clock. It's perfect <laughs> timing. So, yes, thanks, everybody. So please go to puttingforpups.com, and you can buy your tickets there. And it's going to be really beautiful. It's September 13th. September 13th. Oh, yeah, we got time yeah. to like yeah. get that. And I can maybe bring my dog too. I would love that. Yeah, she's great. Love that. Yeah, Good. and um, where can people find you on Twitter or Instagram? Lori Allen, the numeral one, and LoriAllen.com. And I'm like that. So find me, right? Right. Right. And you can get her voice right now on Inside Out yes. coming out this Friday. And I am Cora Takei. Thank you guys for joining us for some Spotlight On. And we'll catch you guys some other time for some more talk. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the host only. They do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.